Welcome to the Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Mark Clements' in-depth, relevant biblical teachings will help you in life and living in today's world. Now, let's join Pastor Clements in the service already in progress. So that's what I'm going to do this morning. Let me, let me just talk to you for a few minutes and and, and just, uh, not because I'm, I'm doing what I want to do and not the Lord, but this morning he gave me permission. He said, you just have a chat by the fireplace, you know, with, with your flock, with your family, and, 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 and just say, if there's one thing that I'd recommend to you to help you in Christian life, just one thing, it would be read your Bible. Read it every day. Read it without fail. Read it every morning and read it every night. Just read your Bible. And, and, and I'd concentrate and focus primarily in the New Testament, in the Gospels, in the Book of Acts, in the letters to the churches. Now, why would I do that? Why would I say that? Pastor, why would you say that more than what you'd recommend people to walk in love? Because that's the new commandment, not read your Bible, walk in love. Uh-huh. Realize you wouldn't even know to walk in love without your Bible. That's right. Well, don't you think you should, the, the, the one thing you'd have Christians do is win souls? You wouldn't even know how to win souls without your Bible. Wouldn't even know how. Well, don't you think worship is, is the most important thing that Christians can do? You wouldn't even know to worship or how to worship or why to worship or who to worship without a Bible. You remember Acts chapter, chapter 8? You remember Acts chapter 8 where Peter and John went down these people were believers, and they got baptized in water, and then they went down and laid their hands on them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember that chapter? And then remember at the end of the chapter, Philip? And Philip is walking down this road, and a chariot goes by. That's the mode of transportation. You know, it would be like a bus going by or a minivan going by. Uh, and, and, and there was a man reading his Bible. And the Spirit of the Lord said to Philip, Run, jump on that chariot. And so he ran along <laughs> and jumped up on the chariot. <laughs> And here the ushers would go, ha! <laughs> he, he, he ran up there and he jumped on the chariot and, and, and he said, hey there. The man said, hey there. He said, what you doing? He said, reading my Bible. What's it look like I'm doing? And, and, and Philip said the, said, the, said the strangest thing. He said, do you understand what you're reading? And the man said, how can I without someone to guide me? How can I understand the Bible without somebody to help me? Will you help me? Who is this man writing about, himself or another? Peter looked down, and he's reading out of Isaiah. He's reading the story of Jesus. And Philip said, no, he's not writing about himself. He's prophesying hundreds of years ago of one who would come, who just in our lifetime has come. And he was crucified. You may have heard about it. He said, I did hear about it. He said, that's what this is written about. And he preached the gospel to him. And he said, stop! And the chariot stopped. And he said, there's water. Take me down and be baptized. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. He went back to his area of uh, eastern Africa. And there is still a tremendously powerfully strong component of Christians all throughout Nigeria, Sudan, Ethiopia, Kenya, All still as a result. In Kenya, I know a man personally uh, in in Kenya, know him by face. He knows me by name. Uh, I see him about once a year at a conference that I go to. And Kabingi told me, he said, in the farthest back history books that we have, there is record of one of our queen's servants that went up to Jerusalem and brought Christianity back to our nation. In the history books, in the history books, right in the history books, right in the history books. You know, I I, I learned those kind of stories in Sunday school, didn't you? I learned about Noah and the ark. I learned about that man and the chariot. Uh, I learned about Jonah and the whale. I learned about David and Goliath, didn't you? I learned about Elijah calling fire out of heaven. I learned about Jesus being born in a manger. And learning all of those Bible stories, I I consider to be just an important component of Christianity. 
But just because I learn what the Bible says, and, and, and just because I learn the Bible stories, and just because I, I, I have memorized a, a number of scriptures, or again, just because I go to church and hear a message and even take notes, God wants me to be a doer of the word, a doer of what the Bible says. And I should never, never be deceived into thinking because I went to a service and I took a few notes and I memorized the scripture too. I shouldn't be, be confused into substituting that for being a doer of the, of the Bible, or being a doer of the word. You have to learn it before you can do it. You have to hear it. And the more you meditate on it, the more you will practice it. Amen. The more you hear it, the more you'll put it into operation. But if I could tell you one thing, it would be just read your Bible. And then what I've started to do uh, is, is just take a pen. I don't highlight anything in red. I highlight in yellow. I highlight in gold. I highlight in orange. And I highlight in green. Uh, and... and uh, I underline, I put brackets around it, stars and little arrows, and write my own notes. But I've started to do something in red in my Bible. And that's mark every verse that I should be doing. Not just hearing, doing. Now see, every Bible verse you can't be a doer of. What's the shortest verse in the Bible? Jesus wept. I can't do that. I can't do that. And Philip chased down the chariot and jumped in the back. I, I, I can't put that into practice. You were chasing people up and down the interstate, and, and we'll either visit you in jail or have your funeral. <laughs> you, can't, you can't be a doer of that verse, can you? I, I, I read the story of, of Noah, and I know they built it out of gopher wood, and I know that it was 300 cubits by 150 by 75 and three stories. I can't be a doer of that. Those are just accounts of people that trusted the Lord and believed God and, and, and fought valiantly and quenched the violence of fire and, and received the promises. But I can't do those verses. But how about this verse? How about this verse? Love one another as I have loved you. That one gets read underlined because I can do that. Pray without ceasing. That gets read underlined because I can do that. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. Are you hearing me this morning? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Do all things without murmuring and complaining. Yeah. Submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Honor your father and mother. If you're a wife, there's verses there. See, you can go to conferences. You can wave your hanky. You can underline them in your Bible. You can write them down in your notes. You can memorize them and meditate on them. But until you start doing what that Bible says in, in regard to your husband, you're not a doer of the word. You're deceiving yourself. Is that in the Bible, Pastor? It's, it's right clear, clear, clear as a bell right here in the Bible. Now, we're going to start in Romans chapter 2 just to give you one foundation block. Ready? Romans chapter 2, verse 13. For the hearers of the word, it's not the hearers of the word that are just before God. Now, now let's stop. Remember the word just or justified? That means declared to be righteous, declared to be right with God. So just because I hear the Bible, that doesn't mean that I'm right with God. Just because I hear it. Just because I hear the Bible and it says, remember, remember where this was? Remember where this is in our Bible? It's in Ephesians 4. <clears throat> Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Only that which is good to the use of edifying, that's building others up, that it ministers grace to the hearers. That means I can't talk about other people. I don't care if they're there or not. Amen. And especially if they're not there because then I'm guilty of backbiting. Amen. And I'm talking about, well, here's what he did and here's what he said and here's the way he went and here's what he did. I'm sinning. And if you sit and listen to it, you're an enabler. Yeah. Yeah. Let no corrupt communication. Lying. Yes. Cursing. Why that? Oh, no, 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 no. No. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Complaining. Gossiping. Amen. Amen. Let no corrupt communication. That one gets double red underlined. Yeah. 
Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Okay, there's another great verse in Ephesians chapter 4 that says this. Don't let your anger cause you to sin. That's right. Amen. It, says, it doesn't say don't be angry. Anger is an emotion. Yeah. It just says don't let your anger cause you to sin. Amen. Then remember the rest of the verse? And let not the sun go down on your wrath. Yesterday was some people's favorite day. It's the longest day of the year. They could hang on to it. There goes that sun down, down, down. But I got an extra minute. I can stay mad another minute. No, no, it got down. Yesterday was it. Now they get. Now they're starting to get shorter. You came for good news. Uh huh. No, the Bible says it. The Bible says it. I underline in red in my Bible what the Bible says that I should be practicing, that I should be doing, that I should be applying. Your Bible says. Mark eleven twenty two. have faith in God. Yeah. Your Bible never says have faith in yourself. The Bible says, doesn't say have faith in man. The Bible doesn't say have faith in your faith. The Bible doesn't say have faith in somebody's testimony. The Bible says have faith in God. So I better be running, underlining that verse, highlighting that verse, doing something there, because there's one of the verses I should be doing. Rejoice in the Lord sometimes. Oh, where's that? Now, don't, sh don't tune out right now. Don't tune out. I almost saw somebody going, I don't want to know. All right. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord always, Philippians 4, 4. And again, I say, Rejoice. that's like if you didn't get it the first time, you know, if your cell phone was vibrating and you were looking down and you missed it that first time. Rejoice, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. So these are verses I can do. Amen. Bring your tithe into our house. I can do what the Bible says. And it says here that it's not the hearers of God's word that are just before God, but the doers. But the doers are justified. It's the doers that are right. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. This is it. We're two-thirds of the way there. James chapter 1 and verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only deceiving your own selves. That doesn't take the devil to deceive a person. It, when you hear the word, practice it. Put it into practice. Do what your Bible says. When you read it, when you meditate it, when you study it, when you hear it, do what it says. Don't go, because, hey, oh, Minister Trailer, will you just pray for me for this? You know, on the inside, I'm thinking, I'm not doing what the Bible says, and, and, and I have no intention to do what the Bible says, but I just want you to pray, and God will get me out of this, and then I just won't have to do it. Never work. You waste his time. No, don't, don't, don't be here of the word only and think you're going to be blessed in all your deed. Let's keep reading. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. Deceiving who? Your own, Your own self. For if any be a hearer of the word. Now, it didn't say don't be hearers of the word, did it? No, you have to be a hearer of the word or you're never going to be able to do it. You wouldn't know how to pray. You wouldn't know how to witness. You wouldn't know how to relate to other people. You wouldn't know how to forgive. You, you wouldn't know that that was God's will. You wouldn't know how to praise him. No. So, 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 so hear the word of God. It says that in verse 22. Lay sinfulness aside and receive with meekness the engrafted word. That's what it says in verse 21. And then verse 22, but be doers of the word, not only hearers, deceiving your own selves. If any is a hearer of the word, not a doer, is like a man beholding his face in a mirror. He looks at himself, goes his way, and immediately forgets what manner of man he was. But whoever looks into, look at this description of the Bible. Whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, doesn't think they graduated, doesn't think they've apprehended, doesn't think they've attained or arrived, but who continues therein, he, not being a forgetful hearer, see, I, I can't remember the Bible, Pastor. I have a hard time remembering the Bible. I got, I got, I got a great way to, 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 to help you become a doer of it. Because it says there, you, you won't be a forgetful hearer. If you, if you put it into practice, you won't be a forgetful here. But whoever looks at the perfect law and continues there, and he not being a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. 
One translation I love says, in all of his deed, in every aspect of life and living, there'll be blessing on that person's life. Just because they're a doer of the word, not a hearer only. And my last verse, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. See, it is what the Bible says. It is what the Bible says that it's the doers of the word, not the hearers, that are right with God. It's the doers of the word, not the hearers, that are, that are blessed in all of their deed. The doers of the word, not the hearers. And so whatever it says to you to do, and of course we could, we could, we could go right through these, uh, these previous chapters. Chapter 5, let your light shine before men. In verse 16, chapter 5, in verse 44, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them to despitefully use you. Give me that red marker. Okay, here we go. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if any smite you on the right cheek, turn the other cheek. Oh, keep that red marker for yourself. <clears throat> All right. Chapter 6, don't pray to be seen of men. Chapter 6, don't do your giving to be seen of men. Chapter 6, don't just use vain repetition as you pray. Chapter 6, forgive everyone of everything. Chapter 6, don't lay up treasures for yourself here on earth only. Chapter 6, take no thought for your life. Chapter 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Chapter 6, take no thought or worry or care or concern about what may come tomorrow. That's all just chapter 6. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> chapter 7, judge not that you be not judged. Don't pick at the splinters in other people's eyes or, or in other people's lives. Whatever you'd want men to do to you, do to them. The golden rule. All of these things are right there in chapter 7. And then he finishes all of these three chapters. Chapter 5, 6, 7. And then it says this. Therefore, how many of you got a red letter edition of the Bible? Are these verses in red in your Bible? That means Jesus said it. And so Jesus the Christ, God's Son, our Redeemer and Savior, said, the King of Eternity, Lord of Lords, He said, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine. Oh, i got to have a couple volunteers up here. All right, all right. You, 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 two, you two men. Yeah, just come on up here. Man, you guys look sharp. You know you're right with God if you go to church, right? Nope. You know you're right with God if you slick up and put on a black suit and wear a tie and, and man, have your, you all fixed up. and uh, I, I must be right with God. No. But I was sitting in the church service and, and I was listening when pastor preached. I got to be right with God. No. No. Uh, uh, is that your Bible? Yes, sir. Huh? Hold up his Bible. I want to see. He brought a Bible. What's that right next to it? A notebook and a pen. Would you stand up and, and hold those up and show everybody that he came to church with a Bible and a notebook and a pen? Wow. Amen. Thank you, Vanna. All right. <clears throat> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is, is, that, is, that, is that his Bible? That's his Bible, and those are his notes. He's actually been writing in them. Wow. Okay, we've got two men. Thank you, Anna. All right, and we've got we've got these two men, and and they're both at church, and they both look nice, and they've both been paying attention. I watched neither one of them fell asleep. They both have their Bible. They both been looking along. They both been taking notes. Therefore, who wants to be number one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I know what the Bible says. I'll be number one. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine. Now, what do you think whosoever means? Anybody. Anybody and everybody. Whosoever hears these sayings of mine. I need a married couple up here. You're, 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 you're. you're. Quickly, all right, up here, like, up here, like, come up hither, come up to the,
All right. You both been in church this morning? Yes, sir. Did you both bring your Bible? You both been taking notes? Yes, sir. Whosoever. Okay, you two on this side, you get to be verse 24 and 25. You gentlemen over here get to be verse 26 and 27. You're welcome. You can buy me lunch later. <laughs> Therefore, whoever, raise your hands, whoever hears these sayings of mine, and you ought to underline this, highlight this, put brackets around this, make sure you absolutely remember this. If you don't remember one thing I've said about anything else today, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them. And practices them, not memorizes them, not writes them down, not can quote them, not can preach them. Who does them? Who does them? Whoever hears what I say and does it, I will liken to a wise man that built his... Oh, i got to have a storm. I have to have a storm. Where's my storm? <laughs> Affectionately called Johnny Raincloud. <laughs> Tony Raincloud. <clears throat> All right, now watch this. Now watch this. These people are not only hearers of the word. They not only go to church. They go to the same church. They both carried a Bible. They both took notes. But the person on this side actually put it into practice, actually did what the Bible said. They actually walk in love. They actually forgive. They actually comfort the feeble-minded. They actually share the gospel with other people. They let their light shine. They bless them that curse them. They pray without ceasing. They rejoice in the Lord always. They let no corrupt communication proceed out of their mouth. <laughs> These people come to church, hear the Bible, write it down, memorize it, but they don't do those things. Or they don't do all of those things. So you're single, right? So maybe he doesn't do the things that the Bible addresses in regard to single people. You're married, right? Maybe he doesn't do everything that the Bible tells him in regard to his marriage. You're a parent, right? Maybe he doesn't do what the Bible tells him to do in regard to instructing and disciplining and training and raising up his children. So if he doesn't, he's got to go over on this side. Because he, he, now he's not doing the word. And the storm comes. Now watch this storm. Watch this. Whoever hears these things of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain descended... And the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat on that house. Now watch. You're looking, at the, you're looking up here, and you're not reading your Bible. The Bible says, but the house did not fall. It did not crumble. It did not crash and burn. It did not become obliterated. It did not become a poor testimony to the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. No. This person's life, their health, their marriage, their, their business, their finances, their peace, uh, those things didn't fall apart. Even though, now listen carefully, even though the rains descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house. Did you hear that? Yeah. Rains came, the floods rose against, the wind blew and beat on that house. That's a terrible storm. Let's read about the other people. 26. And everyone, stop. Who is everyone? everyone? That's everyone old, everyone young, everyone middle age, everyone female, everyone male, everyone educated, everyone not so educated, everyone very spiritual, everyone not so spiritual. Everyone. Everyone who hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not. That's the only word that's different there. The only word that's different is they don't do them. They hear them. They both come to the same church. They're married to each other. And one is a doer. And when the storm hits and the 
Rain descended, floods came, winds blew and beat on that house. What happened? Nothing. They stood. The temptation was the same. The challenge was the same. The storm was the same. You're not, you're not in sin because you have storms in life. They come to everybody. Look at the next verse. Look at the storm. Wow, look at this. And the rains ascended, floods came, winds blew, and beat on that house. Did we read that somewhere before? The storms of life come to everybody. Life is life for everyone. The grieving of bereavement and financial lack and physical illness, they come to everyone. Relationship issues and problems come to everyone. Challenges with your children come to everyone. Spiritual attack and trying to get you to quit and trying to get you to give up and trying to deceive you and trying to get you offended and trying to get you contentious, that comes to everyone. Every one of the storms of life come to everyone. Do you get that? Do you get rains descended? Floods came, winds blew, and beat on that house. And they all fell. And they all fell. And they all fell. Not because they were bad men. Not because they didn't come to church. Not because they didn't carry their Bible. Not because they didn't read their Bible. Not because they didn't listen and hear their Bible. <coughs> they didn't fall because they didn't take notes. Because they didn't memorize, because they didn't have blue and green and purple and pink and yellow and, 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 and orange highlighting in their Bible. They weren't defeated in life because they weren't in the helps ministry and didn't serve in the church. They, they were defeated in life because they weren't a doer of the word. And that's exactly what this, you've heard this prayer, thank you, doer of the word. <laughs> Just to remind you, the Bible says, honor your father. <laughs> oh, that's just, isn't that, isn't that, I mean, every one of the Bible's instructions. Sometimes we just read the Bible for, for promises. Sometimes we like what it says about what we get and, and, and what the Lord's done for us and how the Lord's going to help us. But the New Testament, if you will do that, if you'll read through the New Testament one time and underline in a specific color, maybe you've already got red in yours, but, but if you do that, you would absolutely be amazed. You'd be wishing you could go back under Moses. I mean, if there's only 10 commandments. Because there is a lot of instruction in your Bible about how to treat other people. Amen. And how to relate. How to, how to relate to God. How to walk with Him. Not all of it. Some of it's a story about Peter running his mouth. And getting in trouble. Yeah. Some, some of it's about sick people. And, and, and a lot of it's about Jesus. Some of it's history. There's a great account in there about a cross, a cross made of wood and the savior of all of humanity hanging on it. We can't negate any of that. and We don't skip over all of that. This is just one exercise in the Bible. But I'm sure glad I was with you in church this morning. I'm sure glad I was here for two services and got to hear this message twice. How important it is to know what the Bible says and then do it. To know what the Bible says and then put it into practice. To know what the Bible says and then let that govern every aspect of, of life for me. God bless you. It's been great to be in church with you this morning. Let's all stand. Thank you for watching The Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church. Living Word Christian Church welcomes you to join us at 2015 Ward Avenue in La Crosse, Wisconsin, Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30, and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information on Living Word Christian Church, visit us on the web at lwcclax.com.